Hey guys, it's Julie with Julie's Designs. Today we're gonna to be working on a really cute DIY. And now that I've finished the walls in my party room outside kitchen area, I have a cute little space to film which is much brighter, there's not as much going on, I can make a cute little display. So if y'all haven't checked out that video, make sure y'all watch it, I'll put it in the link below. Okay, let me show y'all what we're doing today. We're gonna be working on some spring stuff. If you watch some of my other videos, I've been talking about, I have a, um, a show coming up, I'm gonna be a vendor at an arts and craft show, and usually I have lots of hard goods, like wood and stuff like that, in my booth and I really wanted to bring in some texture, some fabric, so I've been figuring out different ways to make that happen without actually having to sew or buy things to resale. So let me show y'all what I came up with. I am like so excited about these things. So in this video, we're gonna be making the carrots. And if you see behind me, I see um, there's lots of bunny rabbits and stuff and we'll make those in another video. But today we're gonna to concentrate on these super cutesy little carrots. They are adorable. I'm so excited. I had this idea in mind. And so I did, you know, try, sometimes I'm like up for trying stuff on camera and just see how it goes. But this one, I didn't want to see if it came out how I envisioned and I am in love with it. What you're gonna need is you can look around your house, see if you have any fabric that you want to use. If you don't, my favorite thing to use right now for everything around the house from curtains to pillows to artwork is drop cloth. I just love the texture of it. It just looks so expensive and it's so cheap. So my favorite drop cloth is from Harbor Freight. They have drop cloth at Home Depot, at Walmart, but I just find the one at Harbor Freight is different. Like it's just, it just looks more expensive. I like it much better. So that's my recommendation, the drop cloth from Harbor Freight. And then you're gonna want a little sprig of greenery. This is the boxwood from Walmart and it is 98 cents, I believe. So you just pick these up. They're usually like down the middle aisle or you can find them in the floral section. I just love these, 98 cents. And you can find some at the, the dollar store or the Dollar Tree or whatever. But I think these look super nice for 98 cents. I find sometimes the flowers at the Dollar Tree just look cheap. And even if I would, even if they were $2, I would definitely prefer them over something at the Dollar Tree. So let's get started. Let me move this out the way. Sorry, that was a little loud. Okay, I'm actually gonna be using a different fabric for the big one. I have this ticking fabric that I found at the thrift store. And to make the big one, which I, the one I'm gonna make is a little bit different because I made this one and then I made this one. And I loved how the top of this one was like kind of scrunched up. So I did not leave enough space on this one above the C to be able to do that. So we're gonna make it a little bit bigger than this one was. That way I have enough room at the top to scrunch up. So you want it to be 10 inches by 20 inches. You wanna cut two pieces of fabric out that size. So I have two pieces right here, okay? And I'm gonna measure the center. If I had a pencil, I would mark with a pencil the center. So it would be at five. And what I'm gonna do is just organically go up into a triangle. You're going for like a farmhouse look, so it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. Let me keep it out so I kind of know what I'm doing here. Okay, so I see where the center's at. And you're just gonna cut up kind of like a little, kind of like a rounded triangle almost, all the way to the top. There we go. Same thing on this side. Kind of round it out in the middle and then straight up and don't worry if you have like ragged edges and stuff you can go back and fix that later so don't don't stress about it right now now i left my tip like a little flat so you can i want it to be like a little bit rounded so i'm gonna do that and again you could do this after okay 
Now I actually like the inside of this fabric better just because it's a little bit more muted. So you want the sides you're going to use to show. So it's not like we're going to do this and flip it inside out. However it is, that's how it's going to be. Oh, and then I mentioned this is a no sew project because I don't sew. I mean, I do sew, but I ain't got time for that. We need it to be quick. Now we're going to be using hot glue. My favorite brand of hot glue is the Gorilla Glue. I just find it's a... It's about the same price as the other glue, but it, I find it just works so much better. And I did actually order some fabric hot glue. Did y'all even know that was a thing? So I tried that with this and I hated it. I mean, maybe I would have to get used to it, but I didn't find it like flowed evenly and it was insanely hot. Like, I don't, way hotter than normal hot glue usually is. So I didn't like it. I ended up going back to my Gorilla Glue glue sticks and it's been good ever since then. And the fabric glue was expensive. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to glue the edges. But you want to leave like a little bit of space because you don't want to hot glue all the way on the edges because you want like this little area right here where it gets ragged. You understand? So you're going to go maybe like a half an inch in and start hot gluing. I put a little bit of hot glue. I'll push it down. You don't want your hot glue to go dry. And these are decorative pillows. So it's not like it's going to be something that people are going to be washing. They're going to put it out for their spring decor and then it's going to get picked up. So you see how quickly this goes. And I do want the edges to get kind of uh, ragged and starts to come apart. That is the look we're going for, but then it'll stop at that hot glue, which I don't think they would become, they would fray all the way to the hot glue, but we want, we do want it to fray a little bit. Okay. So now I have my base of my carrot and let me do all the painting at one time. So let's do our small carrot too. So we're gonna do a small carrot next. Let's put the big one on the side and let it dry for a little bit. And we're gonna do a small one. So same thing, this one is half the size. So it's five by 10. So you want about two and a half inches. That'll be your center point. And you're just going to kind of a rounded triangle cut to the top. There we go. There we go. All right, this one looks kind of crazy. Actually, I'm just gonna glue it and then fix it after. I don't need that anymore. Okay, let me get, keep my space clean. Don't need all of that. All right, so. Do the same thing on a high glue, leaving a nice bit of space around the edges. Is my high glue for me? Yeah. Um, and then you just push it down. High glue. And then push it down. All right, I'm gonna set this on the side. Okay, now we're gonna paint. So, y'all, I made my own stencils for it cost me two dollars because what I did was uh, these are from the Dollar Tree, these little wooden letters are from the Dollar Tree. So, I got the whole alphabet for a dollar, and then they have these little sticks in the craft section, and I got a pack of those and cut them down, and I just hot glued the sticks onto the back. That way I wouldn't have to get paint on my fingers. It would just be easier to stamp. So that's what I did. So if you want to stamp, you just go to the dollar store, I'm um, Dollar Tree, I'm sorry, the Dollar Tree, and you get your, your little things. Now you don't have to hot glue the sticks on. The first time I did it, when I did this one, I just had the letters, I didn't have the sticks on back, and I was thinking how I could make this more easier to handle. 
So that's how I came up with that. So you're gonna wanna space your letters out where you wanna start from the bottom because we wanna leave that area up at the top to be able to scrunch it up and to tie it. So we're gonna start at the bottom. Where's my T? Here it is. T O. You wanna make sure you spell it right. I am the most awful speller ever. Okay, I have a P because I'm just using that as a spacer. Okay, there we go, carrot. And you could also, it could say nothing if you don't want, if you don't want, if you want to skip this step and just make the cute carrot plushy without the sand, you could do that too. Okay, I'm using the Apple Barrel paint. You can get this in, from Walmart and it is the color ripe tomato. So even though tomatoes in there, it's like more this, this orangey color that I like, which is showing up kind of bright on screen, but it's not really that bright. It's like a, a pretty deep, like burnt orange color. You're not gonna need too much paint. Okay, I'm gonna start with the T and then work my way up. All you have to do is put some paint on it and then you stamp it down. Okay, might need a little more paint on that one. I am not a stamping expert. It's only the second time I've ever done this. There we go. All right. So you need a good bit of paint on it. Normally I like all my signs and stuff. I hand paint it all, but fabric is far to do that. So stamping is definitely much easier. There we go. Okay. Trick, lots of paint. I'm just kind of clumping it on there. Okay, I'll need the P. And it does seem to do better on um, the drop cloth fabric is seen to stand better than it is on this ticking fabric. But that's okay. We want that imperfect handmade look. That is what we're going for. And I'm just trying different stuff out to see what works, what doesn't work, what I like, what I don't like. And even if these don't sell, they definitely will look great in my booth with all my other stuff. I am not wearing a painting shirt. This is one of my favorite shirts. I really hope I do not get orange paint on it. All right, C. All right. Carrot. Look how cute. Love it. Okay, next we're going to do the little grain sack stripe. So for this, you just want some masking tape. You can use painter's tape, whatever you have on hand. I don't know if scotch tape would work. I never tried it. So you just want to get some strips and we're going to put the first big stripe down the center okay so i have a stripe down the center now next i'm going to do a skinny stripe here i want to do everything at one time so i'm done with it you don't have to wait for it to dry so i'm using my tape as spacers
and I'm just eyeballing it. You want to push it down good. Oh, that one's not straight. Let me try again. You want to push it down tight so you don't have bleed through. Okay. So I have big stripe with a piece of tape as a spacer and then small stripe. And same thing on this side. So that's all you're doing. Okay. And then I'm going to use this brush. This is a stamping brush, but really... It doesn't matter. You can use whatever you have. And you don't want too much paint on your brush. And I'm just going to rub it on. Kind of want like an old faded look. You could go a little deeper if you want like more color on there. Just put more paint. Just whatever look you're going for. So you see, I'm just putting a little bit of paint on my brush at a, time, at a time and really just pushing it down into the fabric. And that's why you wanna make sure your tape is nice and on there because you are pushing hard and you don't wanna push your tape up. All right, that looks good to me. So that's what it's gonna look like and then you're gonna pull your tape up. There you go. You have a grain sack in no time flat. How cute is this? Okay, so now we need to stuff the carrots. I am using, you can get polyfill, whatever. I just got this big old uh, pillow from Walmart. They're like $3 and something. Plus it comes in this cute ticking fabric. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tea dye this after I finish using it. And I'm going to use it to make more stuff because it's definitely a very farmhouse look. I just need to darken it up. It's a little bit too clean looking, you know? And so the inside, the filler is like this. So it's like perfect. So we're going to stuff our little carrots. They have had time. Um, the glue has had time to dry. You don't want to stuff them like right as soon as you put the hot glue in there because you need to let it dry for a little bit. Okay. You want to get that the point in there. Normally, I would maybe use a pencil or something, but again, I forgot to bring a pencil over here. So I'm just going to have to stick my finger in there. Stick some out. There we go. So you want to get that point first before you finish the rest of it. Okay, I think that's enough. Don't forget you want to like leave some at the top so we can make that, that little tie right here. So where's my string? I brought some string over here. Hold on, let me get my twine. Oh wait, here it is. Okay. So this is my favorite twine from the Dollar Tree. It's usually in the hardware section and it comes in a pack of three. So you're gonna kind of gather, you wanna push your feel down, make sure it's not in your the part that you're gathering. You're gonna gather it up. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it just to make it easier to tie. And I'm just gonna tie it one time because we still have to put our greener in. But just to kind of keep it together, you just kind of wanna zhuzh it a little bit, get it looking cute. There we go. Okay. And this is a whole sprig. This is some that I've used before. So I'm gonna, I forgot my scissors, y'all. I am not prepared. Okay, I'm gonna have to go grab scissors for this because I need to cut off this excess. So for the smaller ones, you don't need to use a whole one. You can use, uh, make two, you know what, I might be able to bend it. 
sometimes when you bend the wire back and forth, it just breaks. You could get a few, make a few small ones out of one sprig of, of these. Okay. And then we're just going to stick it in the top. <gasps> so cute. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hot glue just to keep the greenery in there and to make this kind of come out a little bit more and have it be where I want it and stay that way the whole time. So you just want to stick some hot glue in there and then hold it down. Okay, now I'm gonna wrap this around a few more times. So the first time you just wanna kinda get it to stay in place. Like tie it up, get it to stay in place, and then you can come back and do a few rounds. I think it looks cute wrapped around a few times and then make a little bow. And then you're done. You have a carrot. A little farmhouse striped carrot, so cute. So my end is a little bit rounded, so you can come back. That's what I was saying. You can come back after and kind of change it up a little bit if you want because you have all that space on the end. So you can kind of cut it if you have some edges that aren't clean. But what happens is, is it starts to fray. So then it really doesn't matter. It just kind of goes with the look. There we go. Now let's move on to the big one. Okay. We're gonna get our, oh, draw my hot glue gun. Get our filler. Let's see, it's easier right at the beginning if you don't use too much and you just get it all the way on that tip. So you want to fill it all the way to the C and then the extra we're going to wrap up with our twine. I'm going to do a little bit more. I'm loving this fabric and I do prefer this side. So that's the inside and this would have been the good side, which that would be cute too, right? I don't know. It's all about experimenting. Like before I started this video, I was like, let me make a few. So I was making some of the rabbits and all, and I'm like, oh my God, I have to stop. I have to make this video. It just kept, I kept getting more and more ideas. So just be inspired by this. And you can start with my idea, but then while you're doing it, you could come up with some different ideas. And that's just kind of what happens. Like it's just happens organically. Okay. I think I want a little bit more. Okay, I think that's good. So we're gonna tie it just to keep it in place. Okay, where's my big one? And then for the big carrot, we're gonna use a whole thing and you're just gonna stick it in there, right through the polyfill, just get it in there. Okay. I think it needs to be in there a little bit more. Really having to push it in. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna do like I did with the other one, just add a little hot glue in there just to keep everything in place. 
so it doesn't fall out like if a kid pulls just on the top and then while it's hot gluing you kind of want to spread out the greenery a little bit so that way it's all not just coming out the top it's kind of spreading out a little bit cute okay now i'm gonna cut some more tie it around a few more times and then this one is done So I'm going to take it and go around it, calling on my rings. I like it wrapped around a bunch of times. That just creates more texture. Makes it look a little more expensive. And I do kind of like it folded over. You know what? I high glued all the way to the top. I think I'm going to... There we go. Just pull that off. That way it kind of just folds open like this. There we go. There's to be a carrot. <gasps> Look. Two carrots done in no time. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know whenever I do the video on the little bunny rabbits. Let me give y'all a little sneak peek. So I have this one that was like more like a pillow where I put it on top. And then I have some of these here. And I have it, oh, I gotta show y'all. I have one of these two. So I did like a few different styles. Okay, look how cute. So this was like a little baby shirt and I kept the buttons and everything on and just cut out the carrot shape. So cute, right? Okay. All right. I'm ending this video now. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Again, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think and hit the notification button so that way you know when I make the next video. Thank you.